now it's time for us to turn after that very fascinating presentation to a second option. Our second paper is titled Names as Cultural and Historical Artifact, Black Materiality and Storytelling in Ryan Coogler's Black Panther, based on the 2018 hit movie Black Panther, whose sequel Wakanda Forever is now taken box offices by storm again. Our presenter is Ayo Kunmi Ojibode, who is a lecturer at SOAS University of London and also a visiting fellow in the Institute for Name Studies at the University of Nottingham. Would you please start by pronouncing your name for us so that you yes. can correct any mistakes that I have entered? Yes, I think you tried. My name is Hayo Kunmi. Hayo Kunmi. Kunmi. Hayo Kunmi. Re do mi re. All right. Please, welcome. Thank you very much, um, Christine. So um, thank you so much for those privileges to share my article. Um, just like Christine has done, my name is Hayakumi Ojebode. Um, of course, it's a Yoruba name, just like um, um, there's this popular quote, you know, that for every African name, there is a story. So we are going to see, of course, for my name, it means joy has been added to me. So, and it has a lot of story. As we're going to see in those papers as well, we are going to see different stories that has been entrenched into each of the characters in Rian Kugler's The Black Panther. And I'm sure that in the next few minutes, I will be able to stimulate our interests and um, discussion um, about the importance of those names. So my title is Names as Cultural Historical Artifacts, Cultural and Historical Artifacts, Black Materiality and Storytelling in Rhea Kugler's Black Panther. So um, this is my introduction. I'm going to play some short video clips, you know, just to introduce the film so that I can do less talking and then I will move into the character analysis after that and then um, go to my conclusion. So the introduction, Black Panther, um, as we know, currently there is a sequel um, that's currently in the movie theater, is a 2018 American superhero film adapted from Marvel Comics, produced by Marvel Studios and directed by Ryan Coogler. Critics of the widely acclaimed film have considered it from an aesthetic, cultural, filmmaking, historical, racial, stereotypical, and technological lens, but overlooked names as a transcultural and material artifact to bridge the gap between fantasy and reality. African and Black speculative culture reimagined within a collage of different ethnic, cultural, and regional background. So these short video clips gives us an introduction about this movie I'm talking about. I never knew that. As you can see, I am not dead. This is Black Panther, also known as T'Challa, the King of Wakanda, and is one of the most popular and profitable Marvel superheroes of all time. We haven't met yet. I'm glad. I don't care. But it took this fan favorite, who spent much of his Marvel legacy in the shadows, over 50 years to get his time in the spotlight. T'Challa was first introduced as the sensational Black Panther in 1966 in issue number 52 of Fantastic Four. Created by Marvel legends Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, Black Panther was originally conceived under a different name, Cole Tiger. Lee claimed that he drew inspiration for the character from the name and emblem of a political party in Alabama, the Lowndes County Freedom Organization, which coincidentally inspired the Black Panther Party. Black Panther made history as the first mainstream Black superhero in a comic book. And he was good at everything. On his resume, you'll find enhanced superhuman abilities, mastery of hand-to-hand -hand combat, a PhD in physics, and other smart things that were too dumb to comprehend, and the power to control the undead. And all this doesn't even include his seemingly endless supply of the most rare element on the planet, vibranium, a nearly indestructible metal that can absorb kinetic energy. 
After his debut in Fantastic Four, Black Panther became a key member of the Avengers starting in 1968. He then bounced around the Marvel comic book universe for a while, eventually headlining his own series starting in 1973, and then off and on throughout the following decades. Overall, the character continued to be a mainstay in the comic books, but never quite reached the popularity of other Marvel favorites like Spider-Man, the Hulk, or Captain America. Even when actor Keith David voiced Black Panther's television debut on Fantastic Four the Animated Series, in 1994, it was only for one episode, where he first fought the foursome, then joined forces to defeat his arch nemesis, Claw. Match your flame power against my feline agility. <laughs> the end result was a superhero who demands the audience's attention and respect. Well, God, no more. So, after over 50 years, Black Panther is finally front and center on comic books, movie posters, and he's gearing up for his second feature film. All, All right, thank you. So, I hope that little video clip has given us an introduction into the film. So, the main question I, um, I'm, I try to ask from this article or from this discourse is simply, are the character names that have been used, deployed by Ryan Coogler in this Black Panther film, are they meaningful? Do they convey the message of the film? And do they project the African or the um, African American or the Black history? And are they sources of um, history and material artifacts, uh, as, as I argue in this article? So the background of this study, this study explores the film to underscore the cultural and historical importance of the character names as a reminiscence of the link between African and diasporic communities. So though there have been different um, controversies around the origin of, of the film and whether they truly project the Black history. So however, my focus is simply on the character names um, which have been customized to blend with the science fiction and fantastical context based on the deployment of apostrophic names to convey exotism, T'Challa, Tishaka, Umbaku, Wakabi, perhaps african American predilection for sounds like sh, sh influence the name choices, as we're going to see in my analysis. So, of um, of course, um, the introductory video clip which I played, you know, gave us a little information or hint about the um, the original writer of the Marvel comics, Black Panther, and Stan Lee, an artist, um, Jack Kirby, created Black Panther's characters, and in fact gave the name T'Challa, the king of the fictive African nation of Wakanda, which was first introduced in Fantastic Four, as you see the picture on my right hand, you know, in 1966. However. Stan Lee's most taught character names were derived from alliteration, simply English names that we're used to. And this is um, this um, um, slide leads me to the next slide that of um, Rhea Kungland's uh, contemporary decolonial vision of Wakanda in Black Panther. And how he deploys and introduces the Afri um, Afro-Tourist utopia in the form of Wakanda, a fictive African nation that boasts of an inexhaustible supply of mineral uh, metal, vibranium, and a val um, valuable industry, um, indust um, indestructible element that crash landed outer space in um, African region some time ago. So to the next slide, as we'll see, um, Ray Kugler, who is the contemporary director of the Black Panther series, you know, now with the sequel you know, in the cinema, so um, exploits a lot of African resources, and that's the main crux you know, for the, my title about the Black materiality you know, and artifacts, as we'll see in the film. So on my right hand, we'll see a picture of um, of two characters in the films, you know, dressed in African accoutrement. So Ruth E. Carter costume designer for the Marvel Black Panthers draws heavily from the garments or accoutrement of Maasai and other African tribes, inspiring King T'Challa and his tribal council's um, dress, you know, or costume in the film, which represents each of the tribe. So, and um, apart from the costume designer, we also see that the uh, the um the music composer for the film you no know, also tries to introduce a lot of african materials and resources in the film so as we'll see in the short video clip which i would ignore because of the time 
So we find that the Senegalese songwriter and guitarist Baba Mal, a descendant of the Fulani tribe, chants about an elephant who has just died. The elephant represents the king, T'Challa's father, um, who died you know, in the United Nations office. So as a result of, um, of uh, uh, a bomb impact. And he talks about the time for someone else to take over the throne, but not to rush into it. And we find that this music, you know, prologues the film, you know, particularly the transition, you know, and the exchange of power between the older and the younger generation of kings, you know, of this fictive African nation, Wakanda. Since Wakanda has never been colonized, we'll see that Goranzin, who is the composer, you know, for this um, series, um, for the series, went to places, traveled to different places in Africa, you no know, engaging girls who are known as West African kind of historians or bards who keep the history of, of, of a community or a family. In fact, there is a quote that says that in Africa, when an old man dies, you know, it's like a library that is bombed. So we see that the composer um, exploited the engagement with different um, African you know, uh, personalities in order to you know, blend you know, the contemporary and the African you know, mode of music you know, in the film. So we see the solo talking drum as well performed by the Senegalese player Masamba Diop would imitate T'Challa's name every time that he appears on the scene. We also see the use of horns, which give the, uh, T'Challa a more royal feel. So, and then, of course, whenever a scene focuses on the daily lives of Wakandia, we hear the kora, kalimba, and a lot of traditional African instruments play, you know, in the background. So, the next slide ask a question. Are these character names simply um, um, atropopes, um, uh, um, apostrophes? in the science fiction of, of and fanta, um, fantasy names, or are they simply, um, are they simply uh, names, meaningless names, or probably to project, no, the film and the message of the writer. So we, uh, as we see in the slide, no, apostrophe in science fiction and fantasy film are often attributed to Anne McCaffrey, whose popular Dragon Riders of Pan series included character names such as Flair, Dragonflight, the first book in the series, which was published in 19, 1968, but appeared in short story form in Analog Science Fiction magazine in 1967. So, but it wasn't only McCaffrey that you know, used apostrophical names in order to popularize our works. So we also see that in um, Paul Dinot's Edgar Rice Bureau book, Tanzan of Apes, which was first published in the magazine 1912. So I, I, I established there that maybe American authors such as McAfee and Zelanti thought that European or Arabic names were slightly more exotic and drew on that for their character names. It's also worth noting that McAfee was of Irish descendant and so strong ties probably inf influenced you know, the apostrophe character names that we'll find in our works. So of course, we are not talking about McAfee. We are talking about the Black Panther by Ryan Kugler, um, produced in 1928. And as we've seen this film, we find that we have um, more um, Arabic apostrophic names as well as you know, Swahili names you know, deployed as character names in the film. But do these names, do they convey any meaning? So we see from the first list, T'Challa, it's as an origin. These are possible origin because the film you know, draws from different African resources. T'Challa is the name for one of the inferior or lesser kings who hold allegiance to Matia, Matiamvo, a powerful emperor in the interior of Angola under Portuguese colonialism. You also see that the name could be, have been derived from Lake Chala, um, also known as the Chala, you know, um, on the border of Kenya and Tanzania and the eastern edge of Mount Kilimanjaro. So, and we find that the origin of the name, you know, Wakanda, has been traced to different countries, probably Uganda, Buganda, and a lot of um, a lot of likely places. But most likely, you know, the name has been taken within the um, within the geographical location of either Kenya or Tanzania. So we see another name, Nakia, is an Arabic name. You no, know, Nakia is given to uh, a female child, and it could also be a unisex name, meaning pure or faithful. And we see that some of these names, which are, are more than arbitrary because they play out 
in the roles and you know, the, the traits of the character um, for those who, of us who have watched the movie. So we also see another name, Okoye, which is a Nigerian name from the Igbo tribe, is a family name originating from Nigeria. And it, it denotes um, someone that is born on Orie or market day. And this is why I started with um, the quote that behind every African name, there is a story. So we see that some of these names are, are, are more than arbitrary because they convey different meanings, you know, that consolidates the message of the writer of Black Panther. So quickly, we also see in um, four, we see another Arabic name, Kabi, is a clip of the Arabic meaning um, Kabir, meaning great or powerful, as we see in the movie, that is also a powerful leader for one of the tribes. So um, we see Zuri, uh, possibly a Swahili or Hebrew name. We see uh, Let, uh, Let Yashuri, no, which is also very close you know, to um, the uh, masculine name, you know, probably you know, denoting uh, um, beautiful or the biblical name, you know, for a, a strong leader. God is my rock. So D, um, of course, we'll still see some other characters' names like Mbako, um, the villain prince in Jobo, and Tichaka, Ayo. It's it's my it's very close to my name. You no, know, my name is Ayo. Komi Joy has been added to me, which has a Yoruba origin. And in fact, we find that. There are instances in the film where the um, the character, you know, who happens to be one of the uh, uh, Milaji, Dora, um, Dora Milaji, who are the female warriors, you know, guarding the palace, you know, invokes some comic um, or um, from some comic or, or funny, you know, statements, you know, in the film. So probably this may be the reason why the director has included these character names. So the question, as I go to my conclusion, my conclusion are. Does this name convey the message that the Black Panther writer you know, seeks to um, give to the audience? So our findings, um, would, we discovered that most of the character names have Swahili, either that is, of course, this is a language spoken in either Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Zosa in Bele, Zulu, Igbo, Yoruba, which are from Nigerian. So we see countries like Uganda, Tanzania, Kenya, South Africa, Nigerian origins. But more predominantly, as I've shown us, we find the clipping of the names, you know, of some of these names, um, um, our uh, apostrophic names, we see that they are more taken from Arabic, probably because, you know, to give a kind of exotic names to this African or decolonized, you know, uh, Marvel character, um, character, which have been showcased in the film. And we find that it draws heavily from the historical usage in North, East, West, and Central Africa before European colonialism. The study concludes that names in the American comic film were crafted to preserve the African ancestral heritage and popular culture using cinematic and historical tools to give the film a wider audience, especially in Africa. Thank you for listening. That was fascinating, Hoyukunmi. Uh, we're so glad to have heard from you directly. I want you to know that our campus took uh, uh, buses with 60 of our students to see Wakanda last month, and they all loved it. Nobody said anything about her name. <laughs> I'm interested now if people have responses that they would like to pose to you or questions. While they're thinking of that, I'd like to ask you, your interest in this sprung from onomastics, but I imagine also because you know so much about the cinematography. Would you talk about the blend of characters on the screen and your interests? All right, thank you very much. So, um, of course, uh, my interest is more in the African history that has been blended with the kind of Afro, you know, futuristic, you know, uh, um, design or architecture of the film in the sense that it seeks to draw a lot of resources, particularly from the names as I've highlighted in the film. And more uh, beyond that, we also see that there's more in terms of even the storytelling, you know, which prolongs the film, that talks about the death of, you know, that talks about the death of an elephant, you know, um, which is meant to convey that's a, a kind of animal metaphor, you know, for uh, for kings or monarchs, you know, in, in the African continent. 
So we also see that apart from that, you know, there's also emphasis, you know, on the accoutrements, you know, which I've also highlighted in my particularly a lot of um a lot of you no know, dresses, you no, know, which have been imported from some of those you know, African com um, communities, some that have even been long forgotten. But we find that this film, you know, it's, it's one of such attempts that tries to, of course, project the, in the African con content, the honest culture, the rich culture, you know, within the African continent, as well as giving the kind of feel, the exotic feeling that, you know, the younger generation enjoys, you know, from watching science fiction. So these are some of my interests, you know, particularly we also find in a blend of some of these Nigerian names, you know, like Ayo joy you know which can be used for different you know we, we find it in it's a unisex name that conveys joy you know and that can, could be used in different contexts so these are some of the things that stimulated my interest you know in in trying to of course it's still uh, a, a research that's still ongoing so and i hope to be able to get enough time to set to to you know flesh it up into a good research article thank you Catherine has added a comment. Thank you for the rich explanation of the background of this important film. I don't follow comics or pop culture very much, so I really, really appreciated this insight. Catherine, I know that you're here. Would you like to add anything to that? Uh, no, it, it's just that it was it was really quite wonderful the way you gave the clips to show us that background. I'd heard of Marvel Comics, but I had no idea. So this really fills in the picture for me as an American of what this was about and why it's important. And uh, as a linguist, I appreciate your analysis of the of the names. Thank you. Thanks. Um, now, uh, Ann Anderson has a question. Go ahead, Ann. Hi, did I understand correctly that Stan Lee actually gave the title character the name? Did he also, or did any of the other iterations of the um, series throughout the comics name other characters that were then included in the film, or were all of the film characters original characters? Um, most of the characters actually are original character names um, used um, the original characters. But however, we find that most of the names that Stanley gave were used for more of the um, Marvel comic heroes you know, that um, are featured in most of um, the films produced before the Black Panther. So I imagine that the reason why you know um, an African American black um, director was um, engaged, you know, to produce the Black Panther was to kind of decolonize, you know, the Marvel comic, you know, stereotypic um, production of probably using you know alliterative names of um, of 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 you know characters from Europe, you know, but in kind of engaging you know uh, the story. Like what story um, does the um, African continent, uh, continent, what story can they also tell, you know, based on their culture? And we find that, you know, Black Panther, though there has been a lot of controversy that it's not purely African, but we find that the, the, the director has tried, you know, in blending, doing more of blending, you know, with what had been obtained in the original um, comics, as well as now introducing, you know, context, stories, you know, um, dresses, you know, language, places, you know, anthropo uh, apostrophic names, as I've highlighted, you know, to balance what's, what's, um, what's had been done, you know, by, by Stanley, you know, uh, you know, in the 60s. So I, I think that's just kind of, I hope my hindsight is um, sufficient enough for your question. Thank you. I didn't know much about the history, so thank you. Yeah, thank you, too. Thank you. Cleveland has a question. Cleve, you want to um, speak then? Okay. Uh, I, the, 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 the beginning is more just a comment. Akia and Zuri and Jabari were all uh, fairly commonly being given to babies by African-American parents before the film came out. So African-Americans would have been somewhat familiar you know, with all of the, those three names. Uh, but I wa wanted to ask if you know, what do people in Nigeria think about uh, 
them using Okoye as the name of a character in the film? Do they think that's odd or humorous or do they appreciate Hollywood using it as the name for that character? Yeah, thank you. So I, I think the deployment of African names really projected in time of market the film beyond, you know, America and European countries who have been used to Marvel, um, to the Marvel comics uh, and the Marvel, you know, production. So, and, you know, that I think, and that's one of the main strength of, or the primary strength of, of the popularity of the film, you know, in Africa, because, you know, the, the excitement of seeing a black hero, you know, unlike the stereotypic, you know, uh, uh, um, previous productions of Marvel comics that are featured on just projecting European characters, you know, white characters and the likes. So, and I think that's one of the main strength of this film, and which is also my argument in this article, you know, in, in terms of how the director, you know, who was given the script, you know, has been able to kind of decolonize the Marvel comics, you know, in extending the message, you know, to, you know, less known places in Africa, you know, stories that have long been forgotten, you know, even tribes that people don't, that a lot of, there are, there are no historical documents about them. So, and I think from my own perspective, I really appreciate that in terms of having a mixture of all those names, you know, in, in the characters from different parts of Africa, you know, from Kenya, from Tanzania, from Nigeria, and you know, everyone, wherever they, you know, wherever. So you find that this character name cuts across different continents in Europe and Africa. And we see that, and this is, 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 should be encouraged, you know, probably in other productions so that, um, you know, there can be that kind of balance, you know, in, in, in the projection of, of characters, you know, uh, to the audience. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Luckily, we have time for another question, and Alexa has posed one. Alexa, would you like to speak that? Um, it's not really a question. It's just an observation of something that stood out to me in the new Wakanda film. Um, in the new Wakanda film, they have also renamed the lead Mesoamerican character with a name that is actually Yucatec Maya instead of just the random made up name that Stan Lee originally gave to that ostensibly Mesoamerican character. And that made me really happy. I saw that in theaters here in Central America and people just absolutely lo lost their minds. They really responded to that meaning. Thank you for that. And your comment reminds us of the almost universal popularity of the Black Panther and now Wakanda as the sequel. And I can imagine, um, I'm thinking of Marvel Comics and the what, whoever holds the copyright, and I'm thinking all the great work of, of Ryan Coogler. I imagine there's going to be more. So how do you couldn't me? You can you can continue writing on this topic. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the um, discussion. Thank you.